This is going to be a somewhat fast video today. Recently, the State of JavaScript survey came out, and I want to give some thoughts about the survey, some things that are of interest to me. I also want to encourage you to take a look at it and sign up if you haven't so you can participate in the next survey. In fact, that is one of the first things I want to talk about with this survey. We need more diversity in the survey. Let me start by just taking a look at the demographics section here. First thing you'll notice is there's not enough participation from different parts of the world. We need to increase that participation. Now that really goes along with the language issue here. Most of the respondents spoke English and we need much more diversity in language participating in this survey. This is the first year that I've actually translated in multiple languages, I believe. And so from here on, I think that will become better. We'll get more languages being represented in the survey itself. Here's another point of diversity down here. This is gender. As you can see, a large portion of those that responded are male. That needs to change to better represent the state of JavaScript in the world and also race and ethnicity. White or of European descent are 70% of the respondents. So we definitely need to increase the number of respondents of other race and ethnicities. And like I said, with the language change, that might help somewhat. I'm hoping it will. One more point of diversity that I think we need to expand on to make this survey better and that's down here with JavaScript proficiency. I feel we need more beginners responding to the survey. I understand why people aren't responding to the survey if they feel they're just getting started with JavaScript, but I think it can help provide a more rounded view of the state of JavaScript if we have people on all parts of the spectrum responding. The large portion are expert and I don't know that that gives the perfect picture of where we are at with JavaScript if we only have experts responding to the survey. Obviously, there are a lot of intermediate and advanced, but I think we need more beginners responding. All right, another area I want to comment on, and that has to do with features. This is actually what I see as a positive thing, uh, for me anyway. Now, I like this graph that they present at the start of features. They're circles that represent different things that we can use in JavaScript. The outer circle are people are represent those that have heard of the technology. The inner circle are those that have used it. So for example, fetch, the inner circle is almost as large as the outer circle, which I think is a good thing. Uh, that people are using fetch that have learned about it. But some of the other areas that I think are even more promising are some of these enhanced syntax elements of the language that I think really have enhanced JavaScript and make it much more useful. For example, async and await and promises. The inner circles are almost as large as the outer circles, and so people that have learned about them have been using them. Over here in the syntax area, destructuring, spread operator, arrow functions, same thing. The inner circle is almost as large as the outer circle. So once people have learned about those, they've started using them. And those are some very powerful features in the language. And so I'm glad those are being adopted like they are. And even down here in structures, maps and sets, I was surprised by this, that there are that many people using it from those that have heard about it. I think that's a very positive thing for the language. Now, interesting thing about technologies this is another area that is interesting. And the thing that I found most interesting about the technology area is how TypeScript is becoming more and more integrated and used within the JavaScript world. Some of the other technologies are also interesting. You can see how they're progressing and becoming accepted or how some of them are interest is waning in those particular te technologies. So some interesting things to look at in all of these areas in technologies. And I'm not going to look at all the things because I want you to come out here and take a look at them as well. I'll include a link in the description that will go directly to the State of JavaScript survey.
But there is one more area I want to just click on to highlight uh, two of these. Most adopted technology and highest satisfaction. This was a bit of a surprise to me. In fact, both of these were a bit of a surprise and um, probably tells me I need to spend more time. I haven't been one that uses TypeScript much. I mostly use regular JavaScript and don't use the advantages provided by TypeScript. But as you can see, this was awarded the most adopted technology. So between last year or between 2019 and 2020, TypeScript has really become much more adopted within the JavaScript world. Now, highest satisfaction. This one I have not looked into yet, and I need to. Uh, I've used some other testing libraries, Mocha and Jest specifically. Jest has pretty high satisfaction ratings, but testing library received the highest satisfaction, so I need to look into that and learn some more about that. Anyway, these are some things that I wanted to mention about the State of JavaScript survey. And really, I want to get you to go out there, take a look at it yourself, see what you can learn from it. But also, sign up. Sign up so that you will be sent an email when the next survey is going to happen. That way, we can get more people in on this. We can get more diversity. And I think we get a better look of the State of JavaScript. Thanks for watching.